Okay, welcome to BIM Object Talks. My name is Matthew Jackson and welcome to week eight of what has been a fantastic set of uh, sessions so far, all of which are available on our YouTube channel. So good morning to the States and uh, good afternoon uh, to Europe. Uh, currently calling from Sweden. It's uh, the end of April and we're currently having a snow shower. Um, which, to be honest, is quite typical um, and never really surprising uh, for this. But let's get started. We've got 15 minutes plus 15 minutes QA, and we don't want to take up too much of your time uh, today. So today we're here to talk about Vectorworks and the tools inside Vectorworks, and it's a very quick show and tell on how those tools work. But the first thing I want to ask you as a bunch of Vectorworks users. Um, this is an interactive webinar. So my first question to you, and you can click on the screen, are you an existing user of BIM Object? Really interesting to see um, how many of you here have visited us before, have been using us before, have not, whether this is the first time you've heard my voice. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Uh, all good, 82% of you voted already. All right, fantastic, let's close the poll. Let's show the results. So, great, so 57% of you here have never been on BIM Object or at least haven't used BIM Object in earnest. 43% of you, yes. So, welcome back to the 43% and hello to the 57%. So, for those 57% and even for the 43%, here is who BIM Object are. We are nearly 400,000 professional users, we're nearly 1,000 brands, we're over 10 million downloads, and we have over 250,000 parametric objects on BIM Object in a number of different formats. And uh, we're working very hard to make online parametric configurations which you can download static files for. Very exciting times, if you may have seen some of our tools. We're not gonna demonstrate that today. That was demonstrated a couple of weeks ago um, and I advise you find that video, Creating Geometry in the Cloud, um, for what it is. Interestingly and excitingly, um, since uh, the beginning of this year, we have seen an enormous growth in professional users and downloads. And if you look at the statistics, these statistics were created on April 11th, and we had 381,900 users. And as of an hour ago, we had... 398,790. We're nearly at the magic 400,000 mark, and hopefully that will come tonight. We're 10,000 new users a week on average. So this is really exciting times with BIM Object being five years old, but we're now getting the hockey stick effect where huge, huge, huge numbers of people are now coming to BIM Object to source their real manufacturer's content. But why are we all doing this? Well, BIM building information modeling, we kind of also kind of pen it as building information management. And in our world, it's the management of the information which is coming from the manufacturers into the design process and into the construction process. And this is, this is a really, really important area. The whole point of BIM is build it twice and build it right. And we firmly believe, and a lot of people in the industry also agree, that we cannot accurately construct things in a computer to then be accurately constructed in the real world unless we source geometric and data information from the manufacturer themselves. And our growth, I think, really, really does reflect that. So today, what am I going to be talking about? Well, I'm going to be talking to you about accessing the BIM Object Cloud directly from Vectorworks without having to leave. Um, I'm going to be downloading some new objects. I'm going to be replacing some existing content and I'm going to be adding some data sets, not necessarily in that order, but that's what I'm going to be doing today. One thing which is really key is that you need to know how to search for stuff on BIM Object, and that is a separate 15 minute talk. In fact, it was my first talk that I did uh, week one. That is available on our YouTube channel. It's 15 minutes on how to search by specification, how to search by category, how to search by brand, how to search by a mixture of all three plus file formats and regions of availability. So go and have a look at that. Again, 15 minutes. 
it's on YouTube. Go and have a look. Um, and uh, I'm sure you'll find some really cool stuff uh, there to learn. So the prerequisites uh, for what I'm talking about today, you need Vectorworks 2017, Service Pack 1, I believe we're now on Service Pack 2, and you need one of the uh, pieces of software, which is either Architect, uh, Spotlight, or Landmark, or of course Designer. Uh, above that's where uh, the tool power is available um, and of course you need a free BIM object account here at BIM object as a user um, everything you get from us is free of charge uh, as it is today uh, so that's a really quick registration process so what I'm going to do I'm going to show you this pre-recorded video because that's the easiest uh, in this circumstance and obviously I'm using uh, Vectorworks Designer 2017 in Mac I'm a Mac user um, although I have to use Windows sometimes. So on your tool sets on your left hand side, if you click on furniture, you'll find the BIM object button. And like I said, this is pre-installed. And when you click on this for the first time, you'll get asked for a user identification number. So go to bimobject.com. This is the only time you ever have to use a web browser. Go to your account settings and your user ID key, your API key will be found at the bottom there and you paste it in here now I've hidden what my number was there for a second because I don't want you getting access to my account but it's that simple and this is a one-time thing so next time you press the download an object button which was the first button you saw there this will be your landing page this is where you will come so for you guys in the Vectorworks world um, this is what you will see. You will see that you are able to download AutoCAD files, 3ds Max files, SketchUp files, and native Vectorworks files. How is this possible? Well, the very good chaps at Vectorworks uh, over in the States um, have made some fantastic uh, converters because they understood, of course, that they uh, started uh, releasing this app back in 2016 and of course we have already started producing a lot of content in other formats so this means that you have access to uh, 14,000 different products from uh, just over 500 different brands uh, which is fantastic uh, for you guys um, and that means that we can have information which is both native and non-native um, from Vectorworks. So let's continue and let's have a look at where we are. So I'm going to press play, continue this video. And you have the ability to search. You can see all the filters on the left, all the search buttons in the top. Like I said, I'm not going to go into detail in this webinar. There's not enough time. That's a, its own 15 minute talk, uh, which will be presented. So I'm going to download this lucky B17 um, from Blue Station. Um, and I'm going to download the SketchUp file in this case i can also download the 3d dwg file or the 3ds file it doesn't matter I can download any um, and it will always work the same way so now vectorworks is uh, converting that file uh, and i was a bit too far zoomed in there and i'm going to place it so first things first we do have 2d representation in plan that's really important and now i'm going to zoom around and show this now in 3d going to run an open gl render and you can see that this now appears. This uh, nice chair seems to have a wooden finish. And of course, importantly, data exists. So this is an IFC furnishing element. Um, and we have lots of data. So we have BIM data, which is updatable. Um, so, you know, manufacturers can change this data and we can push updates in. Um, and it has loads of really data rich information there uh, for you to use. Now, if I click back on my object and I click back on my toolbar, there's other buttons that I can click. The I button will take me back to the product page and it will tell me more information about this page and I can learn more and maybe contact the manufacturer. Next, I can update. Now, I've just downloaded this product and all my products are therefore up to date. But if this project potentially was mothballed for a year or two or shelved for a year or two, Manufacturers are constantly updating their information. And the way that we deliver this is that we can deliver update reports to you and we can drive up-to-date information into your models upon request. It's not automatic, it's a question. 
uh, and geometry you can re-download. And this is really important if products have gone end of life or have been up updated. There's more information about this in our Data on Demand app, um, which uh, you can find uh, on YouTube. Another thing we can do is add data on demand. So this is a quick snippet. Again, this was a 15-minute YouTube presentation, as I just mentioned a second ago. And here I can add Kobe for the UK, or soon we'll be able to add um, other classifications, such as uh, some maybe some master spec data or some ETIM data. And now what I've done is I've added a Kobe data set. You see I've got another record format here. And uh, this was a default set of information just for a demo purpose but we can add information this information comes from the manufacturer it's filled out by the manufacturer and it's updatable so we can drive updates this way now i'm going to have a look at an existing project and uh, here you can see the uh, arbol elder project which of course is a is a public project i've downloaded from vectorworks and i'm going to download or and uh, replace this uh, toilet we've got here. So I'm going to go back onto BIMObject.com using the button. So it's a three-click world. I never have to leave Ve Vectorworks. I'm doing this all inside Ve Vectorworks here. And I find the brand that I want, and I'm going to scroll down to the product that I want here. And I'm going to download a native Vectorworks file. So we do have native files as well. So now this will download. And what will happen is it will appear at the end of my cursor. So this is really important. None of this importing, finding stuff. When you download something, it will always appear at the end of your cursor. If I don't want to do that, I'm going to click on the, uh, click on the existing toilet and replace my object here. Pick the right one. Press OK. And then for some reason, when I refreshed it, I also accidentally refreshed it into a different view for this recording. But the toilet has now changed uh, to this other toilet so it's really that simple and of course you can do it with sinks and kitchens and doors and windows and all sorts of different types of objects now this is a very short and quick 15 minute presentation um, and it's that easy now to add manufacturer specific content and manufacturer specific data in there now just a quick point about manufacturer specific information manufacturer specific data and this is a warning, just as I've made some assumptions here, and we talk about this a lot of BIM object now because of uh, questions that we get in from uh, the users. Questions like, why is this data set in here? Or why is this data set not in here? Why is the geometry done like this? Or why is it done like this? It's really important to remember that what might not seem important to you might be really important to somebody else. So it's very difficult to find a balance to producing manufacturer specific content that can be used by everybody. And it's quite difficult to keep swapping stuff out all the time. So just remember, what might not be important to you might be important to somebody else and this is this is really key and we've had some good feedback and comments about that little, that little chart so hopefully now you understand how you can access bimobject.com directly from vectorworks how you can download new objects replace existing content already in your designs to move maybe from a, uh, a design concept to a detailed design etc and you can add data sets so i have another poll for you two polls and the poll is relatively simple. Will you use BIM object as a source um, for your manufacturer specific content? Um, it's in there. It's a three click world as we try and drive. Um, and, you know, we had 63% of you have never used BIM object before. So it'd be interesting to see all that 63% will hopefully become 0%. So 54% voted. Oh, damn it. After 54%. I've got my first couple of no's in. I was hoping it will be 100% yes. Give it a couple more seconds. Who hasn't voted yet? A couple more people. We've got a lot of people in here. So 75% voted. That's good enough. Close the poll. I'm going to share the results publicly with you guys. We're an open company. So 94% yes. Thank you very much. And 6% no. We are always welcome to hear why it's a no. Um, and after this, there'll be a short survey. Um, if you want to give us feedback on why you think no, then let us know. Uh, we are a young company, uh, and we drive ourselves to uh, do the best for our user groups and the best for our clients. And uh, if you think we're doing something wrong, let us know. Be constructive. We're happy to hear criticism. We're not afraid of it at all, and we will act on it.
So hopefully for those who have said yes, you understand the advantages of using manufacturer specific content. Maybe not at the very beginning of your designs, maybe just for concepts you want to use the existing library and Vectorworks has a fantastic existing library. But when you get to detailed spec, really important that it's there. And of course, having manufacturer specific content driven by the manufacturers, checked by the manufacturers. We know that we're going to get accurate geometry, accurate clearance zones, accurate connections into other systems, and accurate data. So if you've missed any of our past sessions, like I said, they're all on BIM Object, and uh, they're part of our YouTube channel. Just type in BIM Object into YouTube and you'll find them. We also have some manufacturer-only videos. We'll be putting those up as links soon, and if you're a uh, manufacturer you'll have access to those and that's about how to better prepare information they will also be available on youtube very shortly future sessions although it is my face for next week uh, it's not going to be me it's going to be my uh, colleague magnus carlson will be delivering that the week after that like i said every tuesday twice a day uh, my colleague yasser khan will be delivering how sketchup and bim object work together um, demoing how we deliver information into SketchUp and we can add data and all sorts of exciting and interesting things there as well. <clears throat> so I've kept good. I'm about one minute over or two minutes over. So this brings me to a Q&A session. Join us on LinkedIn. Follow us on our LinkedIn group. We have a LinkedIn group as well as a company page where we're you know, very happy to have debates and discussions. Follow us on Twitter at BIMObject or myself. I'm at cad for mac I've had some very interesting Archicad conversations today. And I was at a BIM event in London last week. And again, very lively conversation on Twitter. Um, you know, it's very good to discuss and debate things. Uh, the industry is moving very quickly and lots of people have different opinions. So it's good. We are open and welcome questions and criticisms. Finally, to sign up for more of our excellent BIM Object Talks, info.bimobject.com slash webinars. I will now answer Q&A. I will stop the recording in a second, but have a fantastic week. Keep working hard, and we hope to see you here on BIM Object very soon.